Yeah, this was a terrible idea. So a month ago, I started hosting a Dungeons & Dragons campaign where the main character would be completely controlled by YouTube live chat. Now just to make sure a series like this was actually going to be possible, I started with a one-shot. The goal? Stop the spirit of an ancient dragon from turning a village into a frozen popsicle. Sure, that was the plan on the surface, but for me, it was seeing if hundreds of people could work together and control a D&D character in any sort of coherent way. In the back of my mind, I knew this was going to be pure chaos. We're talking bending the rules for the sake of being funny, not taking anything seriously, and simplifying stuff so I could escape all the bookkeeping and actually run a game for them. But so long as chat could at least follow the plot of the game, it would all work out. Hopefully. Even if they don't though, I still absolutely love crazy D&D. So long as everyone involved stays in character, and trust me when I say that chat is very good at roleplaying. But before that, I have to thank our sponsors over at Fables for sponsoring this video. If you want to play D&D with a bunch of vampires, liches, and a super cool story involved the death of the sun? This game has you covered. Fables is an episodic adventure that you can take your party members through, and their new series Citadel of the Unseen Sun is their newest adventure. If you want to run a story or gift your DM an awesome book filled with undead and darkness, check out the link down below. And with that said, let's get right back to the video. After letting Chad slowly make choices on every small detail about their character, we finally finished after about an hour, ending with a green-haired skeleton chef. First they ran off to a frozen mountain and met a frost giant, which they befriended, married, killed, cooked, and ate. Chat really wanted to get some use out of their chef skills, and I don't think it really mattered what they put into their mouth. If there wasn't anything around to cook, I'm sure they'd chop their own arm off for a meal. Afterwards, Chat put out a giant fire like the ones in Ocarina of Time, befriended the dragon spirit, and turned their village to communism. And with the end of that one shot, I gained a lot of insight into how Chat was going to go about playing D&D like this. First off, if they aren't emotionally invested in an NPC, their first reaction is always to try and eat them. Second, whenever initiative is rolled, Chat instead tries to seduce whatever they're fighting. And third, the faster that members in chat are allowed to speak, the more insane their character becomes. Just to get me to read their messages, everyone resorts to spamming hilarious nonsense, which makes them super unpredictable. So, with the one shot complete and my data collected, I completely forgot about the chat plays D&D series for an entire year. Uh, but, but then I returned! Using all the info from the last session, I created a massive campaign with tons of world building, depth, and challenges for the next livestream. That's fancy talk for, I spent a around an hour setting up battle maps. Just to make sure things ran smoothly, a minute long delay would now be on, so people who actually wanted to roleplay wouldn't be suppressed by everyone spamming eat them in the chat. And with that, session 1 began. Chat's new character for this campaign was a blue dragonborn. They wanted to be a robot, but I didn't own the book for that, so scaly it is. Chat used to be a pirate on the high seas, plundering fish to get by. Years passed and their father mysteriously left. This caused Chat's mother to become a cannibal for some reason, and she taught her child that eating people people without their consent was a perfectly normal thing to do. Eventually, the forest around their village began to turn evil, dark magic was corrupting people and turning them into monsters. Chat's mother became a wicked hag. The village was in trouble because she ran off and began abducting people, well, uh, uh, more than usual now. Chat had to stop her. They began the journey and killed everything that got in their way. After dropping a tree on an owl bear and burning some goblins alive, they found their evil mom. Chat tricked her into drinking poison soup, pushed her into her boiling pot and incinerated her corpse. With a single teardrop falling from their cheek as they walked away from the flames behind them, Chat returned to the village. Session 2 The entire village at this point was destroyed by the powerful forest magic. Only a single old man remained who yelled at Chat for having a crazy mother. In response, they consumed him. While eating the man's liver, Chat found a map that he dropped. It led to a giant tree in the forest. Having nothing else better to do, they followed the map and found the tree. There, a shambling mound was was guarding the entrance to the mouth of the tree. Chat just waited for it to walk over a bunch of vines and then cut them all. Honestly, I gotta give them credit. For a dragonborn with 200 voices in their head, they were surprisingly clever here. Now, inside the Great Deku Tree, B the Beekeeper was fighting giant wasps. Helping out, he thanked Chad and offered to travel with them. Easy first companion gained. More wasps tried to kill them right after, including quicksand like honey, and the wasp queen, who was absolutely annihilated by Chad's ice knives and B's flame. Thrower. Now in the core of the tree, evil veins tried to wrap around a giant ball which contained the last purity of the forest. Whoa, is that Chat's father? Apparently he went to grab milk years ago and instead became the last line of defense to protect the core from evil. Chat, ugh, I don't have much time. Go to the pits of hell and find a magical artifact to help me. Good luck. And with that, he teleported Chat and B to hell. In the horizon, a black stone castle could be seen. If there was anywhere to search first, 
first, that would be a good place to start. Session 3. Half the people who joined the session had no idea who B was and tried to eat him. Who would have thought? Now normally I'd let them do whatever they'd want, but also I kinda balanced everything with two party members in mind, so killing him now was basically suicide. Promising that I'd give them another chance to eat him later, the group finally moved on. At one point, Chad and B were trying to get across a magma pit, when all of a sudden a bunch of flying spiders tried to kidnap them. Three fireballs later and all of them died. B almost fell into the lava, but some galaxy brain viewers wanted to use flying magic on him and just in the nick of time. Eventually, the party found where all the spiders were coming from. A giant nest of webs were blocking the way forward. Chad threw a fireball to the nest and disturbed a bunch of them, who rushed out and abducted B. Huh. Guess it's time to go save him. After taming one of the spiders and using them as a mount, Chad flew to the nest and tried to find the cocoon he was trapped in. They found some treasure first though, I just rolled the dice and gave them whatever showed up. Whoa, that's a low number. Wonder what amazingly powerful magical item they'll get. Well, I guess they could use the health right about now. After spraying a ton of acid around the walls, they eventually found a small spider boy named Prince. Now I designed Prince to be super compatible with Chad's, let's just say, personality. Eating people alive and doing crime, Chad immediately tried to invite him to the party. I'm not gonna join unless you prove to me that you don't care about your friend anymore. I mean, my minions almost got him killed and I need to be absolutely sure you don't want revenge. Now I promised Chad that they could choose to eat B later if they really wanted to, and now I was delivering. With that in mind, the poll started. Up until now, Chad had so much time to adventure with B, learn about each other, and grow as partners. Also, a bunch of children left in chat, so that was kind of helping as well. Chad refused to eat B, and firmly stood their ground against the Spider Boy. With a promise that they would hold no malice and a warm hug, Prince was recruited to the party. This is really starting to feel a lot like Undertale. And finally, session four. Chad spent the first 30 minutes searching for the perfect rock to eat when a devil drove up on a giant killing machine. What's up, losers? The name's Taint. And if you have any brain cells, then you'll do everything I say. Chat walked on over to his vehicle, but as soon as the devil pulled out a scary magical collar, they stole the thing and ate it. That was my only collar, you glutton! Mephits, get them! A giant battle ensued. Chat was swept up by their flying spider mount and attempted to flee, but the pursuers were faster and knocked the party straight out of the air. Chat was angry. After getting captured, everyone lost their items, including the rock they still hadn't finished eating. Eating. All of their stuff was forfeit in exchange for the magical collar they broke. And if anyone wanted their stuff back, Chat's party would need to steal a chest from a rival group that stole something from the devil. It's just a massive circle of people stealing things from one another. The group was let free and Chat snuck into the rival camp. They got behind a werebore guard and whispered into their ear. Hey, can you give me like canthropy? Sure thing, buddy! Could use a bit more wearable representation around here! And with that, the boar bit Chat, turning them into a furry! The two minotaur I haven't mentioned yet who are also in the camp were upset. Now that there were two wearables, both monster types now had equal representation. Chat took one of their motorcycles and challenged a minotaur to a race in exchange for the chest. One of them agreed, and with that, they drove off. Smoke! Chat shot a gust of wind to blast it away. Chasm! Flight magic ensured the bike would get over safely. Giant monstrous plant thing that looks hungry and would certainly try to eat the first person it sees. Chad, uh, flew over it, leaving the Minotaur to get pulled off their bike and eaten. Returning to the camp as a winner, they took the chest and drove off, handing it to the devil and getting their stuff back. Mission accomplished. Now, so far, things have been pretty enjoyable. Chad is pretty smart, and with so many different people offering ideas, cool stuff for their character to do is constantly being offered. I just hope they don't, you know, die prematurely, because if that happens, I won't be able to milk this series for content anymore. But you wouldn't purposefully kill your character, right, Chad? Is what I would have said if it wasn't for session five. Yup, we're not done yet because this video took a while to make and we play once a week so the adventure must continue. So in this last session I thought chat was doing pretty well and I decided to be a bit more lenient on what I'd allowed them to do and boy was that a mistake. They started by breaking their teeth by chewing rocks, blasting spell slots using fireballs on everything that they could see, and then falling for every trap in the map I prepared. They were ravaged by a mimic, poisoned by food, crushed by boulders, and strangled by living bookshelves. When they eventually got to the final boss she took 
pity on Chat's lost soul and killed them quickly. It was gruesome, it was unnecessary, and I would 10 out of 10 let them do it again. At this point, their character was a pretty high level, and it saves me time preparing game materials if all they're fighting are goblins every session. But yeah, now you're all caught up with Season 1 of Chat Plays d and I'm sure you want to join in on Season 2 and get Chat's next character to do some wacky stuff. Well, you're in luck, we're currently live streaming the new game every Saturday on YouTube at 3pm EST. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.